add more and more up to its uh, actual strength. It's, uh, it's animate. It's in the analysis tools toolbar. And then you can change the, for the number of steps. So the more steps you have, the slower it will move. And then you can even change the speed if you want to. So you can have it go a little bit slower if you want. So this would be great for your final presentation if you wanted to show animation of some sort of deformation for your sub-suspension of your vehicle, like moving one of the wheels and its associated control arm and things like that. You can show how it impact, gets impacted when the force is applied. It hits like a pothole or something, you know? So this would be something good you could throw in there. Okay, so there's the animation. There is another tool here called cut plane analysis. So if you turn that on, you can manipulate a plane that's given to you and you can check the stresses in the cross section. So if we want to move this back a bit here, we take a look at uh, the inside of our cross section and we can take a look and say, wow, you know, this thing really, you know, is, is, is uh, highly stressed here at this corner and then you can slide it. Um, you can grab the axis and slide it and say, wow, those, ex those stresses extend almost down to here. So maybe you could uh, figure out, you know, where you might need to apply more material based on how that thing has a stress distribution throughout its cross section. So then you can go back in your part, add that material, make it stronger, come back here, reanalyze it, do another cut plane to take a look at it and say, okay, you know, has this thing improved? So that's, uh, that's a really helpful tool. Um, let's see here. There's an images layout, so you can like lay out different images. Um, it's right here. Images, uh, excuse me, this one right here. Images layout. Right there. Um, it's not highlighting at the moment, so let me see here. Let's see, visual palette. Yeah, okay. All right, so that's everything for that. So if you guys want to continue on with the rest of the tutorials, uh, there's how to insert a frequency analysis case, like I was saying before. Uh, we're not going to cover that for this class, but uh, essentially this is how to do some of the other analyses. Um, there was one uh, other thing I wanted to show you guys in here, um, and that's generating a report. So for part of the homework, it asks for you to generate a report on the uh, values of everything that's going on, like the stresses, the displacement, things like that. There's a generator uh, report uh, button right here that kind of looks like a scroll with a little stress icon on it. So if you click on that, you can select where you would like to save your data off to. You can choose the various cases that, uh, that, uh, that you've done an analysis on. And when you press OK, it should bring up an HTML file. And so inside of the HTML file, you can open it up in any type of browser. Uh, it talks about some of the criteria. It talks about the material that you applied as well as the modulus, uh, Poisson's ratio, density, coefficient of thermal expan expansion. So like if you're doing that thermal analysis, that would be the thermal expansion, expansion coefficient you throw in there. Um, it shows the boundaries that were put on your model. So if you did a clamp and constrained it, uh, using like a cantilever, it would show those values instead of these sliders that are inserted. Um, you can insert images on some of the restraint computation, load computation. Um, there should be a thing here on, uh, let's see, deformation. So that it shows an image of how much this thing is deformed. So you can uh, do that. You can do a von Mises stress, so it automatically throws that in there as well. Um, and then you can insert images for any other items that you'd like to if you do those things in the analysis. So for example, if I wanted to do a constraint computation, I'd have to run the constraint computation in the analysis and then it would show an image and actually have some real results in that section. Same for singularity, stiffness, loads, etc. So for this course, the only thing that you really would probably need is just the boundary conditions that you used and the loads that you apply. If we go back into Katia, 
you can talk, you can uh, select your distributed force and say, um, you know what, if I impact the front end of my bumper into a wall, it's not really 50 newtons, it's more like 100. You can go in and change the value that you put in there and then rerun the solver and it should up. So it's a pretty robust system. Um, doing individual part finite element analysis is pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, you just, you just follow those steps as outlined in the, uh, in the part file and you should be okay. Do you guys have any questions at this point? Yeah, about how to do the analysis. As far as what you need to turn in, you will need to turn in two PDF files um, for in-class submissions. So the first one is going to be this tutorial that I just showed you. The second one, you're going to need to do a finite element analysis of the lower control arm of this structure that you guys had, uh, I think, for lab four. Yeah. And then uh, for the homework, you're going to select some parts inside of your vehicle and do an FEA analysis and generate a report for those. And then you will email the reports to byu471 fall at gmail.com. Yeah, for NX it doesn't do that. And that's why they said insert pictures. For Katia, one of the advantages woo is that you guys automatically get those images. Okay, so that's pretty much all I had. Um, if you guys have questions on the actual uh, analysis, like how to do it, or if you would like to learn about like how to clamp things down, um, I can show you that stuff. If you, uh, if you want to see the mesh, if you right click on nodes and elements and go to mesh visualization, or this button right here as well, you can turn the mesh on and off. Let's see, let me hop out of the solver here. Let's see here, we should be able to show the mesh. Actually, it's already. Yeah, there's the mesh. So you'll need to turn in this model we just did, like the city, the, the report. You'll need a lower control arm report, and then you'll need some parts from your car. Yeah, so for this one, it says... Um, Email this, your, your simulation report discussion, an image of the deflection and stresses. So I expect at least one critical part from each team member. And it can't be the same part. So hopefully that will encourage you guys to really get to hear from modeling so that way you have the parts for that. I would um, highly recommend that you guys at least get like your wheels, lower control arm, uh, the suspension tower and things like that because um, when we do an assembly analysis that's an excellent one to do the assembly on and then we'll be doing motion simulation and there's a lot of moving parts for that one so I, I think that would be a really uh, key target that you guys would want to finish as soon as possible no this one's just individual parts next week we'll be doing actual assemblies and it's not too different from what we did here there's a couple extra things that you need to do um, you actually have to put in the connections between parts and then constrain those and then put your loads on and then rerun it. So I'll show you guys how to do that. But uh, definitely have some parts done in your uh, vehicles so that you guys can do that assembly finite element. And then we'll do motion simulation and CFD. So I think like three weeks out when we do the CFD, make sure you guys have surface models for your cars. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to do the same sub assembly. But if you guys could get, and, you know, like the front and back wheels on either side with the associated components, then you can each take different portions of it and see how one might change from the other. So. All right. Uh, the rest of the time is your guys' to ask questions and stuff, and I'll, I'll walk around and help you guys out. Yeah. 
When you guys do your finite element models, if you find areas of very weak uh, stress on your finite element models, go in and add some extra material, and then put that in your final, or put it in for your design review, but also put it in your final report. Because I know Dr. Jensen really likes to see the story of how you guys' car came together and what you've done as a team to like, optimize things. So it kind of goes step by step and say, we did this, we did this, we did this. Here's some videos or images of how that works. This is what we need to, to make it better. Uh, that would definitely uh, show that you guys put some time talk. Actually. 